know, I guess I'll go first. It, you know, it's, it's nice to be uh, thought of for a role that wasn't the finger shaking girlfriend or, you know, the assistant or the secretary. And I know everyone keeps talking about, you know, the mind calendar and the year of the woman. And I just want to say, I, I wholeheartedly believe in that. We are women, we rock, we have babies, we do it all. And um, I'm just uh, incredibly proud and, and so grateful to have this opportunity. That they showcase women not just you know as badasses but intelligent, caring um, mothers. You know my character has a son, um, but still able to go out and, and handle business. It, it, it just feels good. It feels good to not be the pretty secretary or like Sarah said, the girlfriend. Because none of those roles out there. I know. <laughs> I, I think it's fun too that the, all the women are so different and still have those common characteristics. Yeah. Okay. And we have a, uh, a number of uh, really strong women writers on our show, quite a producer. In fact, one of them is here today, and he's dead somewhere here. You won't believe the dark shit this woman writes. <laughs> Uh, this is here with her family. She, she's one of many fantastic writers on our show. Um, you know, and we got an incredible crew. I can see a couple, I, I think, our directors here. You know, Fred Toy, the president of the episode, Kate Bo. We, we have really, really strong uh, supporting staff, and we couldn't do it without them. They're constantly reminding us of Beckdale tests and things like that to make sure we're keeping them on. Welcome to you. Tell us about that scene. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> What's it like for you to write for the show and to write the female characters on this show? Well, we all write the characters. All the writers write all the characters. Um, but for me, it's, I mean, as the women are saying, it's, it's very empowering to actually get to write these scenes. And you don't want them to tell the show. You don't get the chance to really speak as a woman and, and show all the different facets. And I, and I do love that. And I love the girls different. I love that Carter has a son. I love that. And it's everything. It's soft and hard, all the same time. And you guys do this thing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Samantha Shaw, Ruth's first name is also Samantha, a real first name. Is that just a complete coincidence or is it? <laughs> Stay tuned. I'll say I'm to be my daughter's name. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> We should, uh, we should learn that part of the name of Amanda as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's what y'all have in common. Well, I'm just the most, um, the names blow me away. Because I always do my research starting from a character's name. These are the most, I've never heard these names, these character names. So where do you guys come up with these names? John Carter, that's dope. And John. And John. We have uh, more ice questions over there. We'll go to the first one on that side. Hi. Um, my question is, since Reese is surrounded by such strong female characters that can come and rescue him, and <laughs> let such... <laughs> <laughs> Are we ever going to see Reese just lose his shit? <laughs> Reese is semi-retired right now. <laughs> He's letting his hair do a lot of the work. <laughs> Uh, yes, you will. <laughs> Reese will lose his shit. <laughs> For a very good reason. Hi. Uh, Jim, my wife wanted me to say hello. I couldn't let her come today because I didn't want her to be in the same room with you. <laughs> the the balance between having stories that wrap up in one episode where you help someone and then the overreaching arc that lasts one, two, or three seasons. How do you try to strike a good balance? Because I know we generally fall in love with those single episode stories, but then we get intrigued by the arcs, and you know, how do you keep one from taking over from the other? And that's for a great or any of the cast, how they feel about it. Um, you know, 
you really hit on something. I, I think that the landscape of television is changing, uh, and what I mean, broadcast television. Uh, the, the content that's coming out on cable right now is just phenomenal. It's the serialized shows, well, that demographic has responded so favorably to that type of storytelling. And I think we all now have to look at it. Broadcast television you know, has been able to do um, great standalone television for a long time, but I think that the audience is hungry. They're hungrier for the, the larger mythology, the larger serialized arcs, and I think that's what we're endeavoring to do here. We talk about the show The X-Files a lot. Uh, shows like that where you could have a really strong standalone episode, but also there's, there's a bigger story being told. We like to think of it. This is a book. Every episode is a chapter in that book. And, and we feel like you need, you need something else to keep you going, and, and that's what inspires us. And, and I feel like we, we have to be able to keep telling those stories. We have to, to be taking you somewhere. We're taking you on a ride. So where's this home going? And I think the great part is, is that we, we have a mythology built in our show. Some people call it science fiction. It appears to be, but it's pretty factual. And it's, it's just fun. But that's a fun part of the story. And that's what we, we're endeavoring to keep telling. But I guess three are great word these. And also, uh, just to mention, you know, just the writing, I mean, but how the, the look of this that one thing that Jonah uh, promised and has delivered on is the cinematic look that we're doing. The, the amount of uh, coverage, and you have you know people like Fred Toy right here who are brilliant, you know, uh, bringing stuff that, that we've watched for years in, in, in movies, putting it on television. So you have a, this film uh, look, and obviously we're not using a film camera, we're using the uh, uh, computer chip, so the amount of speed, the amount of shots that we can get, the amount of setups, and, and they're capitalizing on, 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 on quite a bit of them. Thank you. One thing I really like though is that uh, there are standalone stories, although there are true standalone stories, a lot of times you kind of sneak in on us at the end, it turns out to be a piece of the bigger story, or it introduces an element that will be continuing. Is that kind of fun for you where you can kind of your you're off like that, or what appears to be a case of the week? Absolutely. We, we love our twists, and, and we love when someone breaks out, a character breaks out, you know. Obviously, um, Sarah and Ruth and, and all these characters that we love to keep bringing back. When someone pops and they're amazing on our show, we just have to have them back. And then if we can, we, sometimes it's, it's planned intentionally, and then we're, we're going down that road, and eventually we know that that's going to be great thing. Sometimes we just, we love the character, we love the storyline, it becomes part of the larger story. Next uh, question on that side. Um, Jim, when you see scripts that you have romantic feelings, are you glad? Or would you prefer to keep going on your own with Finch? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, maybe they'd be a good romantic character, similar, or it's a, 
they're almost like not siblings who kill together. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about the, the two of them and their, their dynamics? Wait, did you just say there were hot siblings that killed together? <laughs> I didn't say hot, it was implied. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't, you know, it's, it's interesting because a lot of people have approached me, I don't know if they've approached you, Jim, about it, but first of all, I think it's the death of any show when you, when you put you know, two you know strong leads like that together. So you know, I hope it's never anything that happens just because I I don't know I don't know I, I just I don't know. But um, I don't know. It's interesting. People say that. I don't know where they they used to say about me. They would be like, when is the recent um, car gonna make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to really say that it protected me. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. You know, and um, I, 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 I just want to say you know, love. I think that's what it is. They, they, they want to see this. Face right here, just mapping on some girl. <laughs> you know, one day harder than that, strong next, the next, and then they can pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are all uh, season four and five, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like the hot siblings that like to kill. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> Uh, thank you for coming, first of all, to Comic-Con, because I'm a very big fan of your show, and I love your show. But my question is for Carter. Yes. If your son came to you and said, I want to go on the, to the police force, knowing all that you've been through, how would you feel about that? Carter, the character. Yeah. <laughs> She's a cop, down to her very soul. She probably would be very proud of that, because she knows what she raised, and he would never fall on the dark side. So she would be very proud. That's my boyfriend, he loves me, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend, yeah. <laughs> well, with everything that she's been through, she still would want him to choose. Yeah. I think she'd be honored that he's following my footsteps. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. She's going to take down HR. So okay. <laughs> 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 and I think they would be pissed if they knew I had. But that's why she's not telling me. Next question over here. How did um, you guys decide we should have a dog for me, Kathy? I'm hesitant. Yeah. 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 The thing that I should have is why did wait so long? That dog is amazing. It's a Belgian Malinois, which is the same breed of dog that uh, still team used when they went into. It's one of the smartest breeds out there, and uh, you know, Michael Emerson is often tasked with walking him. And it's very difficult because Michael is, is he's disabled, he's, he's playing things he's disabled, he's trying to hold a dog and remember his lines and finish mark all at the same time. And it, it, I know how hard it's been on him, but man, people love that dog. <laughs> Don't kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, when I told my wife that we were doing this, she loved the show, she loved the entire cast, and she goes, is Mary going to be there? <laughs> 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 <laughs>